The Medical Devices Group is the industry's only spam-free, curated forum for intelligent conversation with medical device thought leaders. And that's something I gave a lot of thought to when I inherited the group back in December 2011. At the time, there were 73,000 members in the group. And to me, the only reason to be part of that group was it was big. I personally vet each conversation that hits the discussion page. I recognize that the uh, promotions page and the jobs page are selectively viewed. But when people come to the site, the first thing they see is the discussion page. And so my thought is I want those discussions to be actual discussions that invite debate, something that provokes a conversation. I also want the busy medical device executive to say, this is valuable. Why should you spend any time on the medical devices group on LinkedIn? There has to be a value there. Early on, I decided that I had no interest in being an editor. Um, I had no interest in creating lots and lots of content. Uh, I'm not that smart about the category. And I have now the luxury of 125,000 people who are. So why not give these experts a venue for exposure? And uh, that's really why a lot of people are in LinkedIn in the first place. I have an opportunity to talk to the members weekly in an announcement. Uh, I spend a good deal of time crafting that. I always want it to be a discussion and worth time in your inbox. And I think of it as uh, free sampling of Joe. If I can put together a few cogent sentences each week, someone, one or two, 125 thousandths of the group might say, there's a smart guy and I'd like to talk to him about he, how he can something with us. And um, I guess I just need a few of them to pay my mortgage. So in the meanwhile, I'd say I spend 95 plus percent of my time filtering for everyone and helping people that have absolutely no way to repay me. And that's just fine. It's good karma. The other 5% is, I guess you could say self-promotion. I don't like to think of it that way, but you become familiar with the Joe Hage brand, if you will. And uh, every once in a while, um, an advertiser or a sponsor will see value in talking to my audience. So they might say, please let them know about my, you name it. I was going to a conference in San Diego and I thought, I looked this up, I had 1900 San Diegans in the group at the time and I thought, I'll send them an email and say, hey, I'm going to be in town, let's have a drink. Well, LinkedIn makes it really hard to do that. There was no way for me to parse out just them. So I created a San Diego subgroup and the thought was I'll invite San Diegans to join it. And that way, the next time I come to town, I can say, hey, everybody in this group, let's go get a drink. What happened was uh, that worked so well that basically I sent out an email and 40 people showed up at the Del Mar and it was a great evening. If LinkedIn's about networking, I think these subgroups and these in-person meetings is the missing piece. I actually, and I write this to people when they, they contact me, I think that the subgroups may be the single greatest value add of the medical devices group because there's nothing better than meeting someone in person and making that connection. I'll give you an example. I'm filming this in San Francisco and um, I sent out a note to San Francisco saying, I'm going to be in town. Who wants to get a drink? 80 people signed up. Uh, Go Engineer sponsored it. They gave us free drinks. That's great. Did you look at the list of who would be here? Who do you want to meet? And they said, I'd love to meet this person. And I remember I, I took a lady by the hand and I said, come on over here. And I said, Sujata, this is Mike. Mike, you should talk to her. And then I walked away and got another drink. And she came up to me afterward and she said, you have just such a, an easy way of doing that. 
You know, we just started talking and that's exactly what I wanted. If Sujata and Mike end up working together, I may never know, and that's okay. It just feels good to know that maybe something good can come of that conversation. I guess that's what builds trust. That's, I guess, kind of my brand. One of the things that I uh, dislike, I was gonna say hate, but that's too strong. I dislike how often in something like LinkedIn, we're supposed to be our corporate selves. You know, let's put our best suit on and write all the right adjectives and action verbs about how great I am. When I write to the medical devices group, I try to be as colloquial as I possibly can. I write in a very, I attempt to write in a very familiar voice so that the way I'm talking with you now, that's the way I write. And people who know me can read my stuff and say, I can absolutely hear your voice reading this. And when you meet me in person, that's the same guy. So it doesn't work for everybody. Uh, there will be some who are put off by how casual I am. And guess what? We probably wouldn't be the best business partners anyhow. So I don't mind kind of giving you full disclosure of this is it. And if you see potential in us working together, let me know. If I can help, I will. If I can't help, I might know someone who can. I mean, hell, I have 125,000 friends now, don't I? I do love when people open up in the same way that I do. Um, there was a gal recently, young in her career, and she asked the group, um, should I take a job, a sales job that's commission only? And people poured in answers. And she, you could just see in her response how genuinely grateful she was to have this exchange. So um, for all of you out there who've taken the time to give, I thank you. Uh, they thank you too.